are wondering what I'm doing. Yeah, um, well, it's June, and uh, I'm doing one of my all-time favorite summer activities, planning for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. I got my Christmas tree in the background, and I'm wearing my, I'm actually human, but I was raised by elves t-shirt, because, you know, I love Christmas, and it's never too early to start preparing for it. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but we're only 182 days away from Christmas, 182. That is not a lot of time. We are closer to Christmas now than we were yesterday. So just, just put that right here in your brain for you. But I'm, I'm sitting here working on my Christmas list, thinking of all of the things that I want in 182 days. And it got me thinking about today's verse that we're looking at um, in, in John 15, seven. You know, this verse is super great, but uh, it confuses people sometimes. And they get the idea that Jesus kind of works like Christmas. Here, let's see what I mean. Uh, turn with me to John 15, 7. It says in John 15, 7, But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Okay, anything you want, this is what I'm talking about. This is where people get confused with this scripture. So there's something I want to teach you today that's just as important as the verse that we're about to discuss, and it is a new word called context, okay? A lot of people will take a verse and they will pull that one verse out of scripture and they'll say, see, this verse says this, that means this about God. Now, though that is true, though this verse says that if we ask for anything in his name, God will give it to us, we have to look at the whole chapter, the whole passage, what else was Jesus saying? Was he saying that we could come to him and ask for a red sports car and bam, there it is. Kind of like my Christmas list, like whatever we put on here that magically is going to appear. No, not at all. Okay, so we need to look at the rest of chapter 15. Now we've talked about John chapter 15 over the last couple of weeks. So some of this is going to sound really familiar to you. But it says this, Remain in me. I'm starting at verse four. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch that withers, and such branches are piled to be burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples, and this brings great glory to my Father. Okay, so we keep hearing the same phrase over and over and over again in this passage, and it says this, remain in me. What is that? How do you remain in Christ? Well, let's look up the word remain. So the word remain, if you look it up in the dictionary, says that you will to stay um, in a constant place. So stay in the same space. All right. So think about it like this. Like if your mom says, hey, I'm going to this side of the store. I want you to remain here. Okay. Or maybe your mom says, hey, we're walking into a really busy place. You need to remain with me. You need to stay with me so that we are together so we don't get lost. So what Jesus is saying is that we are to remain with him at all times. We are to remain in his presence, talking with him and getting to know him. And that remain is what is gonna bring us and keep us close to him. So what does that look like? When he says, stay with me, stay right behind me, he's talking about in prayer. He's talking about studying the word. He's talking about in our times of worship, getting to know Jesus. You see, the closer we are to God, as we remain close to him, the more we know him, the more we know what he loves, the more we know what he cares about. When this happens, our hearts begin to change. And when we start to ask God for things, we don't say, hey God, it'd be super great if you could give me a red sports car. Hey God, it'd be super great if I had this massively huge house. Hey God, it'd be awesome if you could give me this, 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 and this. And we, we don't create this list of things like a Christmas list, like he's Santa Claus, that he's gonna give us everything we want. No, instead, as we become more like Christ, we become loving, patient, kind, 
generous. We have the fruit of the Spirit living inside of us. And when that happens and we become more like Jesus, when we pray, we start to ask for things that He wants, that He cares for. So what does that look like? That looks like when we come before Him in prayer, we're praying for healing because He promised us healing in His Word. And so we're praying for that neighbor next to us that needs healing. And we say, God, I know that I can come boldly into your throne, boldly into your presence and ask you for healing for my friend because you promised it. It means that God has told us that He would provide for us and care for us. And so when we need Him to provide money or things so that we can have food and clothing and shelter, we can go to Him and say, Hey, God, you promised that you would provide for me. Just like you said, you promised you care for the the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. You will provide for me as well. I know I can come boldly and ask you for those things because they're here in your word. When we get to know God and we get to know His Word, the things that we begin to ask for change. And it doesn't just become this list of things that we want to have. But are you ready for the good news? The good news is this. Not only can we boldly come before God and ask Him for these things like healing and provision and guidance and peace and all of that, but God also cares about the things that are near and dear to our heart. He cares about our wants. He cares about things that we want to have. Maybe we don't need them, but it kind of reminds me of this. You know, over Christmas, we will ask our parents for something over and over and over and over again and say, I really want it. I really want it. Sometimes mom's like, you don't need that. That's not something that you need to have. But we ask and ask and ask and ask. And even though we've been told a million times it's not going to happen, sometimes on Christmas morning, we open up that present and there it is. That thing that we've been wanting is all of a sudden there, not because we've earned it, not Not because we deserve it, not because we've been good little boys and girls, but just because we're loved. Just because we are loved by those around us. This is how God works. I can't tell you how many times that God has blessed me with something that I have wanted that wasn't in need. It wasn't something that I had to have to survive. It was just something that I had said, hey God, that would be cool one day to have that. And God gave it to me. And many times in ways beyond what I could have imagined. So as we continue to pray for the things of God and pray His heart and His will, not only will He do those things that He's promised us, but every now and then God just chooses to bless us just because we're His children, just because He loves us. Isn't that awesome? Today in your Seeds devotional time, you're going to spend time with your family and you are going to make a list. And it's not a Christmas list. You're going to make a list of things that you want God to do, boldly approaching His throne, saying, you know what, God, your word says that you're our healer. Your word says you're our provider. And you're going to go through and write down the things that your family has for God to do for you this week. I can't wait to hear all about the amazing things that God does because we boldly approached and asked Him. Have an awesome week. God bless. I'm going to get back to my Christmas list. New gardening tools. See ya. Whoa.